Welcome to Arlington ISD and our Athletic Center on our celebration today of these young men and young ladies in front of us that are going to advance their education through scholarships and athletics. Um, welcome families, uh, we appreciate you being here. Let's just give them a round of applause. This is a great accomplishment for you all today. <laughs> Secondly, athletes, let's give applause for your parents. Uh, what they did for y'all to put through to get you here is a lot of effort, so let's thank the parents and what they did today. Wow, good morning everybody and congratulations. On behalf of our Superintendent Marcelo Cavazos and our Board of Trustees, I'd like to welcome you to the National Signing Day, which is about you guys. So congratulations. Over 80 athletes are going to go to college or a university in over 15 states across the United States. So you'll represent Arlington throughout the United States and we're very proud of you about that. So athletes, I just want you to look around. Look who's sitting next to you, look who's behind you. These are all accomplished athletes that have worked equally as hard as you have to earn a scholarship to go and play at the collegiate level. For this to happen, we have to talk about the adults that have been a part of your life. We just thanked your parents, but parents, I wanna to say to you, we appreciate the days and days and days you sat in bleachers, right? You sacrificed family meal time, finances, to ensure that your child was positioned enough to be able to excel in sports. So congratulations to you today. This is about you as well as your son or daughter. Next is your coaches. Athletes, think about the very first coach you had. Little League, could have been your mom or your dad. Think about the first coach and all the coaches along the way that believed in you, pushed you. I'm sure you were mad at a lot of them a lot of the time, but look where you are today. So I want you to turn around. If your coach is here, find them somewhere and thank them because they're the reason you're sitting here today. So coaches, we congratulate you today as well. Two more groups that are important to you guys as athletes, your teammates. Your teammates make you better, right? Together everyone achieves more. And your teachers, your teachers have equipped you to be able to go and become a student athlete. The best part of college is athletics, but it's also that degree that you get once you cross that finish line. I had the pleasure of both playing and coaching at the college level. And here's the advice I give to you. Too much is given, much is expected. I want to remind you that you've earned this scholarship, but I challenge you to continue to work hard, to stare every challenge in the face that's forthcoming, and to face each one of these with the winner's mentality that you all have. Remember that a winner's mentality helps you achieve the dreams that you have for yourself beyond high school. You are meant to be here. This is your moment, and we celebrate you today. Congratulations on behalf of Arlington ISD. You know, she hit on something there that, that is very true, that you've been blessed with talent, you've been blessed with dedication, uh, the academic portion that goes through it, uh, and everything that goes along with that. Um, it's a blessing, and now you have a challenge in front of you and that challenge is to go get that degree. Uh, one of the things we talk about often in athletics is this is the few. Um, we have right at 7,000 kids that participate in athletics in Arlington. You think about 7,000, you're, you're in the 1% in here. Um, be proud of that. Accept that, own it, and then go take those next steps. And it's gonna get hard at times. Uh, push through, uh, be successful, rely on what what we taught in athletics and what we teach a lot and what I'll say to the coaches lots of times when we're meeting with them is athletics is a tool that teaches life and success. You win, you lose, you have to plan, you have to manage. And hopefully what we've instilled through our programs to get to you here is that when you go on to those next steps that you've been taught how to manage when things get hard. You've been taught how to manage when things are successful. And athletics is a tool for that. And it's given you a resource to go get an education. 
so that you, as you go through, you can become more successful and uh, continue your life's dreams and journeys as they go forward. So congratulations to each of you again on that. As coach, I would do this real quick, and I know that Dr. McDonald mentioned it. If you coached a kid in this room, please stand up. I want to recognize the coaches. Those coaches just stand up. The other, the other group that we have here today uh, outside our parents are our athletic trainers. I've seen some of, several of those here. If you're here today as an athletic trainer and help keep these kids healthy and on the field and competing on the court and on the tracks that we have out there, y'all please stand up too. I appreciate all that y'all do for our kids. You can look up and see some numbers up there. Um, $6.3 million in scholarships sitting in this room. That's an awesome number. That's a fantastic opportunity. Um, very proud of each one of you that are here, and what an accomplishment. I'm going to call up, we have a guest speaker today. I'm going to call up Coach Bruce Chambers, Assistant Athletic Director here. But before I do that, an event like this doesn't come off easy. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Um, I want to thank our Assistant Athletic Director, Kim Peach, and Steve Guadalupe and Bruce for all the efforts that they put into for this to happen for you today because there, there's a lot of work and a lot of time that goes into this. So I appreciate y'all and y'all doing this. Coach Chambers, if you want to come up. First of all, I'd like to say good morning to everybody. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce our speaker for today. Um, and for me, um, it goes back to I, when I uh, was coaching at the University of Texas and I was actually recruiting the Dallas-Fort Worth area and I had the opportunity to go and see this young man when he was a sophomore. And uh, in the business, the coaching profession, um, that was a term that we used when we saw a, a great player. And that term was that he had it, I-T. Now, we didn't know what it was, but we knew he had it. And uh, when I got a chance to see him play uh, as a young quarterback, he just knew where to go with the ball and was a very, very special player. But more importantly, he had great character, great character, great grades. And those were the things, obviously, a combination with that and being able to play was uh, what you were looking for. Now, our speaker today, he committed to play football at the collegiate level for the University of Texas at Austin, where he played for three years and received his undergraduate degree. Then he was a grad transfer to Southern Methodist University to continue his college football career and obtain a MBA in business management and strategy and entrepreneurship. He has been honored on the front of multiple sports magazines, including Dave Campbell's football magazine, and has been awarded many football accolades over the years. He and his wife, Paige, they feel that God has led them to encourage and mentor young athletes that are trying to make it to the next level. They both have a deep understanding of persevering through adversity and want to lead our younger generation to overcome the mountains they feel are too big. It is my pleasure today to introduce Shane Bouchelle. You know, I'd like to thank you guys for, for having me to speak here today. I'd like to thank Coach Chambers. I call him Coach. Um, like he said, he recruited me whenever I was in high school. Um, so I'd like to thank you for inviting me here today to speak to these kids. Um, what an opportunity that is. But I'd also like to thank you guys who are sitting in these chairs um, for allowing me to speak to you guys. You know, 
just like in my bio it said, my wife and I, Paige, you know, we feel led to, to reach out to you guys, to make a difference, um, and reach out to individuals like you. But I know you in those chairs, you guys aren't just any individual. You guys aren't normal people. You guys have dreams. You guys are motivated to be the best people that you can be on and off the field. And with those dreams that you have, you guys have big dreams, but that being said, with big dreams comes adversity. It comes tough times. Having big dreams comes possibly with injuries, with, with things that can kind of derail you off your path. And, and today that kind of leads me into what I want to talk about with you guys is, um, is just understanding what your path is, what is your purpose for doing what you do, and why do you do what you do? And once I learned that about myself, it took time, but once I learned that about myself, it changed my whole picture about what I do and who I do it for and why I love what I do. So I'm gonna get into my background a little bit. Like he said, I went to the University of Texas. Um, I'm from this area, but went to the University of Texas and I played as a true freshman. As an 18-year-old kid, I stepped on the, the football field and I was starting as a true freshman in front of 100,000 people against Notre Dame, a top 10 team in my first game, and we ended up winning that game in double overtime. And man, when I tell you all the work that I put into that point, it, it, kinda, it kinda made sense for me. As a true freshman, I, I went in, I started a game, I won, everybody was saying, all the fans, all the social media, they were saying, man, Texas is back. You guys have heard it. Texas is back. They're back to being that national championship contender. And man, I believed it. I, I was believing the hype. I was believing the fans. I was believing the social media. And so we were on a high of highs after that game. We were 1-0. It was the beginning of the season. I get that. But we had an understanding of what we had to accomplish. But then things kind of things flattened out a little bit. We won our second game. And then the third game, we played Cal and I, I ended up getting hurt in that game. I broke my rib, um, my first rib, but I continued to play um, throughout the season, but the season just didn't go as what, what everybody was saying it would. Um, we ended up going in the middle, or towards the end of the season, we were five and five. And we are going and we're going to go play Kansas, who some of you guys might be going to Kansas, so I'm not saying anything bad, but at the time in 2016, Kansas was not very good. They hadn't won a game in two years. So we go up there, we're five and five, and I know if I just have to win one more game, we'll make a bowl game, which would be great for the University of Texas. We'll, we'll be going in the right direction, but in that game, we actually ended up losing in overtime to Kansas, which starting at the beginning of the season being at no or playing Notre Dame, a top 10 team and beating them to also losing um, to Kansas, one of the worst teams, not now, but then one of the worst teams in the league. Um, man, I, have, I was on the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, man, it was a roller coaster. But when I think about that, man, that's the game of football taught me the game of life. And the game of life is the most important thing. And so I'll get into that here in a little bit, but man, I was so focused after that first game. I was so focused on what everybody was telling me, what I need to do, what I am, what I'm not. And so at the beginning of the year, they were like, man, this guy's saving this program. This guy's what exactly what they need. But then towards the end of the year, those same people were saying, man, he's not good enough. He doesn't need to be playing. And so I was hearing all of these things, all these different things, and it just made me think, man, like, am I good enough? I was listening to the outside voices. And so my purpose in that moment was, man, I'm, I'm a football player, and I'm gonna be the best football player that I can be, but it, was, it wasn't for the right things. It was for the people that were, that were sitting in the stands. It was for the social media outlets, for them to tell me that I'm good enough. And so, the next couple years go by. I'm still the starting quarterback my sophomore year, and I battle some injuries again. And my junior year, I end up losing the position. I lose the job, and I'm a backup for the first time ever in my life, ever. 
And when I'm there, I get told by the coach, man, it, it wasn't you. It wasn't anything that you did. The other guy is just better than you. And I was like, man, that's, that's, that's tough on me. That's tough. That's the first time I've ever been told that. And so in that moment, I didn't even know if I wanted to play anymore. Being a backup, I didn't know if I even loved the game of football. I didn't know if I was doing it for the right reasons, but I had a great mentor of mine. His name's Kevin Washington at the University of Texas. And he kind of flipped my whole page of thinking. He changed my thinking and it's kind of, it's around the scripture in the Bible, but he told me, he told me, don't make a split decision right now. Go home, take a de deep breath, sleep on it, and make a decision on what you want to do, but I'm going to leave you with this. Um, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, not my own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will lead you to the right path. And so when I heard that, it changed my whole way of thinking. I wasn't following the people anymore. I wasn't following the social media and what they were telling me to do. It changed my thinking of if I just trust God and, and lend everything that I have on him, he will lead me to the right path. It's not the decision for me to make. It's ultimately his decision that he's telling me where to go and I, he'll lead me there. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but he's gonna lead me to the right path because he knows exactly what is destined for me and he's gonna pull the best out of me. And so ultimately I ended up staying that year as the backup quarterback at the University of Texas. And I just told myself, man, I'm gonna be the best teammate that I can be to my, to my teammates. And I was so happy I did. I got a degree, um, me and my wife, we, we uh, graduated at the same time. And I ended up graduating going to SMU, which was an unbelievable opportunity, but my first game at SMU was a little bit different than the first game that I had at Texas. When I went to Texas, I played in front of 100,000 people in that first game. It was a sold out crowd. And I come out, man, I can't even hear myself speak. I can't even hear my teammates speak. But then I go to SMU and, and I run out of the tunnel and there's only like 8,000 people in the stands and I'm, I can have a great conversation with the buddy next to me. There's a receiver on the far end of the field and I'm just having a conversation with him like, hey, you don't have the out route, you got the post and he can hear me. And I'm just like, man, what, a, what is going on right now, man? This is way different. But it wasn't, I think if my freshman year, I would have gone through that, it would have been a whole lot different because my purpose was different. It wasn't about the 8,000 people in the stands anymore, about them cheering me on, cheering our team on. When I think about it, that same mentor, Kevin Washington, he told me, man, 100,000 people, 8,000 people, it doesn't matter. You have an audience of one. And that audience of one is, is God. And if you pour everything into him, man, who knows where you can go? And so that being said, it's kind of a funny story. We ended up going eight and zero at SMU to start the year, and and by that sixth game, seventh game, the 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 crowd was sold out. So that, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. We got to we got to see the growth of of the of the school, but but man, it wasn't about that. It, it was about what my purpose was, and my purpose completely changed. And it wasn't about all that stuff anymore. It was about God and, and lending myself to him and putting everything that I have, 110% of me, into him. And if you do that, he will give you even more. Which led me into being picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs, being there my rookie year, being put on roster. Man, this, this league is crazy. The NFL is crazy. You got 53 guys on a roster and there's about 90 guys on the team, there's a practice squad, there's injuries, there's things that happen, but luckily as an undrafted free agent, I was able to make the team, which is pretty rare. And then my second year, I was able to, this, which was this last year, I was able to make the team. Um, I was the backup quarterback and ultimately we made a run and, um, and was a Super Bowl champion, um, which, was, which was pretty awesome. So, man, it, yeah, appreciate it. But that being said, man, it's, I know it wasn't a straight path and, and I don't think 
the, the game of life. I said it earlier, the game of life isn't a straight path. Man, there's speed bumps, there's potholes, there's, there's, there's hills, there's turns, there's all kinds of things that, that can kind of derail you off of your path. But man, the purpose for me was God and he led me to this path and man, we're still working. A Super Bowl in my second year, man, that's, that's not the end goal. The end goal is, is, to, is to glorify him and everything that I do. And also, that's not the sole purpose, but that's number one in my life. And one, number two, I wanna, I wanna put food on the table. I wanna put a, a roof over, over my wife and hopefully kids one day. Um, we got two puppies, so, so them two, they're important as well. But, um, but I, it's so important to find your purpose in what you do to find what truly makes you love the game. Love what you do, love football, love basketball, soccer, wrestling, golf, baseball, softball. I'm missing a couple swimming, whatever you guys do, you gotta find what, what, sh what, what takes you to the love of that game. And it's different for everybody. But once you truly find that love and what you do, it'll take you to a whole nother level. Not even, not even on the field, but mentally, spiritually, physically, you'll feel so much better. You'll feel free. You'll feel free to play the game, which is ultimately, in this world today, there's so many distractions. I'm kind of getting off a of course. I'm just gonna close this, because I'm just, I'm just preaching at this point, but there's so many distractions in this world, and even in 2015, 2016, it, it wasn't like how you guys have it. You guys have it tough. You do. And so sitting in these chairs, you guys should be absolutely so proud of yourself. You should be. I was in your shoes, but, but this world's different now today. And so be proud of yourself. I, I already, everybody clapped for you guys, but, but I'm telling you right now that it's, it's an honor to speak in front of you guys today because I know the work that you've put in and, and how hard it is to be in y'all's position. And the last thing I wanna say, um, is man, don't take this for granted. Don't take what you guys are doing right now for granted. Whenever I was in your position, my dad always told me, my dad played um, professional sports and my mom and dad always preached to me, man, never too high and never too low. Always, always somewhere in the middle with your, with your emotions. And I have a coach back here, Coach Skinner, he can probably, he can probably tell y'all, man, I, I was always kind of even killed. If, if something was good, I was, I was up there, but if it was bad, I, was, I wasn't necessarily hanging my head, but I was always just even killed. But I'm not saying that's, that's the way of living, but man, just be proud of yourself. Be proud of you. Be proud of the work that you've put in, but just understand that this is just the beginning. The last thing I'm gonna say is, is whenever we're um, right before a game, and they're singing the national anthem, and I'm, I'm, I put my head down and I pray, and at the end of every prayer I say, Lord, you know, I'm living the dream, but I know it's just the beginning. And I have full confidence that God is gonna lead me to something that's bigger than what this game has brought me, but I know if it's in this game, I know it's gonna be huge, and I know God's gonna lead me to whatever he has destined for me. And so I am truly living the dream, but I know it's just the beginning. And you guys are as well. You guys are living the dream, sitting in those chairs, about to go to whatever school you're going to, playing, going to school. That's a dream, man. Not a lot of people, like, like he said, that's, that's the 1% of the 1% get to do that. And so think of that perspective. You're living the dream, but just know at the end of the day, it's just the beginning. You guys have so much more destined for y'all. And so I ask y'all this, man, what's y'all's purpose? And why do y'all do what y'all do? Find that and it'll clear your mind, man. It'll clear, it'll clear everything for you and it'll make that path straight for sure. So I wanna thank you guys um, for this opportunity. If you guys have any questions, um, you can hit me after this. We'll be here for a little bit. Um, my wife, you probably wanna ask her more questions than me because she's, she's the one that's kind of led me on the path too. So, um, but man, we'll be here. But if not, man, you, can, you guys can hit me on social media, anything get a hold of me and man, I wanna know what y'all's purpose is and, and why you guys do what you do and I can help, if I can help in any way, I'd love to do that. So I wanna thank you guys for having me today.
Hey, Shane, before you go, we do have some questions for you. All right. The first question, these are questions that our uh, coaches and coordinators and kids kind of gave to get some insight, a little more, more depth. Um, the first one is, what was the most valuable skill, experience, or lesson that you gained from your high school athletic career? Don't let it be you. And that being said, that's, that's a kind of a cliche statement, but don't let it be you in the aspect of don't, don't let it fall on you on why you're not doing something. You gotta work harder than everybody. The person next to you in these seats, they work just as hard as y'all, but there's so many things that I was listening to and, and people were telling me, man, it's okay, y'all don't, you don't have to go to the track at 8 p.m., man, let's, let's go get something to eat, let's go, let's go to this party over here. And it was always, for me, it was like, nah, man, I don't, I don't wanna do that because I don't want it to be because of me that something isn't happening. I want it, I want to go work. And so the thing that I learned was I didn't want it to be me. I didn't want to be the issue. I wanted to be the person that was working as hard as I can to be able to accomplish the dream like we talk about. You guys are living that dream. So don't let anything derail you off that path. Stay focused, um, take care of everything that you have, school, sports, Life at home, being a, a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister, take care of that first and everything will take care of itself. Great. Second question. What roadblocks did you see for teammates that had the ability to make it to the next level but didn't make it? Just like I said, it was them. It was, it was them getting in their own way. I think just just like I said in the middle of my speech, you know, there's a there's a ton of distractions out there, man. There's there's a lot of uh, things, social media. Um, what's cool nowadays? It's as a as a 16, 17, 18 year old kid, things can seem cool, but man, when you look at it from a bigger perspective, some of those things aren't the best thing for you. So that being said, man, I've, I've seen people who had more talent than me who should be holding up a Super Bowl trophy, but they aren't because they got derailed off their path because they were so focused on what other people thought of them, so focused on did they think other people weren't thinking they were cool because they didn't go to this, they didn't go to this. I mean, sometimes you gotta sacrifice your time, which is, which is a huge thing, sacrifice is sacrificing your time to be able to be the best person, like I said, best person, daughter, son, player on the field, on and off the field that you can be. And so you gotta be able to sacrifice. Some people don't have that sacrifice, which kind of derails them off their path. Great, okay. and the last one, you kind of touched on it a little bit, I think, but um, what challenge did you face in college that could have derailed you from making it to the NFL? And how did you overcome that challenge? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, like I said, all the distractions, but um, being told that I wasn't good enough was, was definitely something that I had never heard. and. Um, I was blessed enough to be able to be in high school and early in my college career to be able to say everybody was kind of on, on a high horse and everybody was telling me how good I was, but whenever I was told that I wasn't good enough, that was, that was tough on me, but um, ultimately, man, you, you guys just have to persevere. You have to push through. You, gotta, you have these mountains, but once you get to the peak of that mountain, man, this it's, uh, it's special, and everybody has their own storm that, that they go through. You think of Mount Everest. Again, I'm preaching, so I'm sorry, but um, you, think of, you think of Mount Everest. I just saw a documentary, and you know, it's a couple week journey up to Mount Everest, and while you're up there, man, you, you never know what can happen. There's a storm, and so you gotta stop. There's another storm a week later, and so you gotta stop, and so you never know whenever you're gonna make it to that peak, but I kinda relate that to sports to where in our careers, and you guys will understand this, and you probably already have, everybody has adversity, everybody has their storm, which can, which can be different, a family issue, a physical issue, a mental issue. It's okay to acknowledge the storm, but to move past that storm, um, you gotta find that purpose in, in what you do, and that will get you past that storm, and it'll get you to the top of that peak, and once you're at that peak, there's nothing better than that, man, so. Um, that's what I'd say to that. I appreciate it.
Shane's a perfect example of hard work and perseverance. Shane, if you can memorize Andy Reid's playbook, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> All right, we'll begin with Arlington High. First up, Alex Bustamante, baseball, two-year varsity letterman, 2022 868 Defensive Player of the Year. Alex will attend Odessa College. <laughs> Unable to attend, but we will recognize Tyler Burleson, basketball, three-year varsity letterman, 2022 and 2023 868 First Team All-District Tyler will attend Victoria College. <laughs> Connor Carrington, football, two-year varsity letterman, 86A first team all district guard. Connor will attend Angelo State University. Barry Dillon, football, two-year varsity letterman, 86A Utility Player of the Year. Barry will attend University of Incarnate Word. <laughs> Noble Teal, golf, three-year varsity letterman, 2021 and 2022. 86A First Team All District, Noble will attend North Central Texas College. <laughs> Ayana Daly, golf, four year varsity letterman, 2022 District 86A Individual Champion, 2021 and 22 District 1A 6A Regional Qualifier. Ayanna will attend Tyler Junior College. <laughs> Jordan Stone, soccer, two-year varsity letterman. She will attend Mid-American Nazarene University. Caitlin Burns, softball, two-year varsity letterman, 86A Newcomer of the Year. Caitlin will attend Western Oklahoma State College. <laughs> Nayeli Freya, softball, four-year varsity letterman, 86A Utility Player of the Year and a first team all district performer, Nayeli will attend Kilgore College. Owen Nysel, swimming, four-year varsity letterman, first team all district, two-year regional qualifier. Owen will go to Quincy University. <laughs> Brooklyn Jordan, track and field, four-year varsity letterman, 100-meter area finalist in 2022. Brooklyn will go to Minot State University. <laughs> Rachel Spicer, volleyball, four-year varsity letterman, District 86A MVP and an all-star. She will attend East Texas Baptist University. Alaya Unset, volleyball, one year varsity letterman. Alaya will go to Vernon College.
Bowie High School. Volunteers will start with Alicia Brown, basketball, four-year varsity letterman, all-district, all-region DFW Player of the Week, AISD Student Athlete of the Month. Alicia will go to University of Denver. William Neal, football, two-year varsity letterman. William will go to Campbellsfield University. Joshua Okello, football, two-year varsity letterman, academic all-state. Joshua will go to Texas Wesleyan University. D'Angelo Ponder, football, three-year varsity letterman, all-district academic all-state. D'Angelo will attend Abilene Christian University. These next two unable to attend, but we'll recognize Jalen Sanders, football, three-year varsity letterman, all district and honorable mention. Jalen will go to Texas College. Also recognition for Joseph Sr., football, two-year varsity letterman, all district. Joseph will go to McMurray University. Also unable to attend this morning, O'Marion Sims, football, two-year varsity letterman, all district. O'Marion will go to Missouri Western State University. <laughs> Kelby Valson, football, two-year varsity letterman, all district, academic, all state. Kelby will go to Texas Tech University. Kylie Phillips, softball, four-year varsity letterman, two-time 86A district defensive player of the year, three-time 86A academic all district. Kylie will attend Vernon College. <laughs> Mariana Rodriguez, softball, four-year varsity letterman, Two first team all district 86A honors, a three time 86A academic all district honor. She will attend Texas College. <laughs> Lamar High School, you're next up. Unable to attend Peyton Browning, baseball, two year varsity letterman, 86A honorable mention. Peyton will attend Texas A&M Texarkana. Corey Allen, football, one-year varsity letterman. Corey will attend either Wayland Baptist or Sam Houston State. Derek Bledsoe, football, two-year varsity letterman. Offensive skill MVP for his team. Derek will attend Southwestern University or Sam Houston State University. <laughs> Robert Brown, football, one year varsity letterman, 86A first team all district. Robert will go to Texas Wesleyan University. Lonnell Cunningham, football, three-year varsity letterman, 86A second team all district. Lonnell, either Cisco College or Sam Houston State. <laughs> Unable to attend, Christopher Johnson, football, two-year varsity letterman, 86A honorable mention honors. 
Christopher will attend Navarro College. Isaiah Robinson, football, three-year varsity letterman, a 2023 All-American Bowl selectee. Isaiah will attend Baylor. <laughs> Martin High School next up. Warriors. Matt Huspeth, baseball, three-year varsity letterman, first-team all-district. Matt will attend the University of Texas Arlington. Corbin Evans, baseball, two-year varsity letterman, honorable mention all district. Corbin will attend Arlington Baptist University. <laughs> Logan Myers, baseball, four-year varsity letterman, first team all district. Logan will attend the University of Texas at Arlington. Cordelius Jefferson, basketball, three-year letterman, first team all district and all region. Cordelius will be a Cougar, headed to the University of Houston. Cody Stevens, basketball, four-year letterman, second team all district. Cody will attend Dallas Baptist University. <laughs> Emily Dolberry, basketball and track. In basketball, a two-year varsity letterman. In track, a four-year varsity letterman. Basketball, first team all-district academic, all-district and track district high jump champion last year, area high jump champion of 2022, and a regional qualifier. Emily will attend Missouri Valley College. <laughs> Michaela Edwards, basketball, three-year letterman, second team all-district. Michaela unable to attend, she will attend the University of Texas at Tyler. <laughs> Michael Barrow, football, three-year varsity letter winner, district MVP. Michael will attend the U.S. Naval Academy. Jeremiah Charles, football, one-year varsity letter winner, first-team all-district wide receiver. Jeremiah will attend the University of Nebraska. Josiah Charles, football, three-year varsity letter winner, first team all-district quarterback. Josiah will attend New Mexico State University. Anthony Crenshaw, football, one-year varsity letter winner, first team all district. Anthony will go to the University of Delaware. Isaiah DeLeon, football, one-year varsity letter winner. Isaiah will go to Hardin-Simmons University.
Cadence Hall, football, two-year varsity letter winner, district special teams MVP. Caden will go to Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Unable to attend this morning, but we want to recognize Chris Johnson, football, two-year varsity letter winner, second team all-district safety. He will attend Hardin-Simmons University. Marshall Sherman, football, one-year varsity letter winner. Marshall will go to Hardin-Simmons. Ismael Smith Flores football, one year varsity letter winner, first team all district in basketball. He will attend the University of Nebraska. Unable to attend, Sergio Snyder, football, the two-year varsity letter winner, first team all district fullback. Sergio will attend the University of Houston. <laughs> also unable to attend this morning, Javian Toviano, football, three-year varsity letter winner, second team all district. Javian will attend LSU. Gage Wager, football, two-year varsity letter winner, first team all-district punter, another Cornhusker, he will go to Nebraska. <laughs> Alessandra Bastida, soccer, three-year varsity letterman, first team all-district. Alessandra will go to Texas Southern University. <laughs> Sammy Martinez, soccer, two-year varsity letterman. She is an honorable mention all districts. She will attend Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. Kendall Jenkins, soccer, a four-year varsity letterman, two-year captain, first team, all district. Kendall will go to Harding University. <laughs> Leanna Soleil, soccer. Four-year varsity letterman, first team all district. Leanna will attend the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. <laughs> Gianna Alvarez, softball, two-year varsity letterman, academic all district. Gianna will attend the University of Dallas. Lauren Hill, softball, two-year varsity letterman, all district honors. She will attend Dodge City College.
Navia Richmond Huzovich, softball, three-year varsity letterman, all district. Navia will attend East Central University. Marquis Shorten, boys track, two-year varsity letter winner, 100 meter and 200 meter district champion. Marquis will attend Texas Christian University. Latoria Perkins Stewart, track, one year varsity letter winner, four by 400 relay winner. She will attend Fort Scott Community College. Sydney Temple Volleyball, two-year varsity letter winner, all-district outstanding center. Sydney will go to East Texas Baptist University. Emily Widener, volleyball, one year varsity letter winner, academic all district. Emily will go to Temple College. Sean Ryan Cars, wrestling, four year varsity letterman, four by one district champion, four time regional champion, state runner up, and a three time state champion, and a team captain of his state dual championship team. Sean will go to Morgan State University. Martin, congratulations. Sam Houston High School is next. <laughs> Sophia Cortez, basketball, four-year varsity letterman, a team captain, and a two-time first-team all-district performer. Sophia will attend Eastern Oklahoma State College. Charity Edwards, basketball, two-year varsity letterman, all district. She will attend Cedar Valley Community College. Vivian Wabufo, basketball, three-year varsity letterman, all district performer, Vivian will attend Cedar Valley Community College. Daniel Adams football, one year varsity letterman, honorable mention all district. Daniel will attend Austin College. Daniel Adenugba, football, three-year varsity letterman, second team all district. Daniel will attend Texas Tech University. <laughs> Anthony Dendy, football, two-year varsity letterman, all district linebacker. Anthony will go to Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Thank you. 
Unable to attend Lafayette Kaue football. Four-year letterman, team captain, and a two-time all-district performer, Lafayette will attend Texas Christian University. Anthony Miles, football, two-year varsity letterman, second team all-district. Anthony will attend Lamar University. Already got that Cardinal red blazer. Michael Myers, football, two-year varsity letterman, second team all district. Michael will attend Tyler Junior College. <laughs> Unable to attend Andre Salisbury, football, two-year varsity letterman, and a team captain. Andre will attend the University of Arkansas Monticello. And recognition for Kendrick Lee, football, second team all district. He will attend Kilgore College. <laughs> Isaiah Martin, track and field, two-year varsity letterman and a regional qualifier. Isaiah will go to Texas Lutheran University. Madison Bussey, volleyball, two-year varsity letterman. Madison will go to Southwestern Christian University. Trinity Hicks, volleyball, one-year varsity letterman. Trinity will go to Southwestern Christian University. Marissa Menchaca, volleyball, three-year varsity letterman. Marissa will attend Jarvis Christian College. Gift, Agadike, wrestling, two-year varsity letterman and a two-time regional qualifier. Gift will go to the University of North Texas. <laughs> Unable to attend, we recognize Jalen Patino, wrestling, a four-year varsity letterman and a state qualifier. Jalen will attend Texas Wesleyan. And Seguin High School is next up. Caleb Brown, football, two-year varsity letterman, unanimous first team all-district offensive lineman. Caleb will go to Kilgore College. <laughs> Unable to attend, we recognize Diesel Gordon, football, three-year varsity letterman, all-district safety, all-district wide receiver, all district special teams. Diesel is at the University of Washington right now. Also unable to attend, Jamel Johnson. JJ, football, four-year varsity letterman, a three-time all-district safety, and a first-time all-district offensive performer. He is enrolled early at TCU. Nase Otino, football, three-year varsity letterman, a two-time all-district running back, and a two-time all-district defensive performer. Nase will go to Texas A&M Commerce. Yeah. 
Victoria Maldonado, softball, four-year varsity letterman, first team all district performer. Victoria will go to Hendricks College. <laughs> Unable to attend this morning, Emanuela Squire, track, three-year varsity letterman, and a team captain. Emanuela will go to Fort Scott Community College. Seniors, congratulations. How about a round of applause for all the high schools this morning? Okay, thank you guys for coming tonight. One more round of applause for all of our student athletes.